Hello, my name is Johnny Birch, and it is my pleasure to be here. Today, I want to introduce to you WASM Score, a novel benchmarking tool targeting WASM efficiency and performance. So, the motivation. Well, not everyone who's interested in WASM performance is necessarily up to date on WebAssembly. Um, they may not be a developer or an enthusiast. Um, I think someone from a marketing department or some other department. But in any case, you know, they typically have questions such as, you know, you know, what WebAssembly benchmark should I be using? You know, which one can I use to track performance? How well does WebAssembly perform on platform X compared to platform Y? Um, I have a benchmark that runs in N seconds, but is this good or bad? What do I compare it against? And, you know, I've heard that WASM, for example, has near native performance, but what does this mean? How near is near? Uh, you know, and specifically they want to know if their workload that's typically compiled to native is suddenly compiled to WebAssembly, will there be a noticeable drop in performance? So what do we have today? Well, if you do any kind of GitHub search or you know web search, you're sure to find some sort of benchmarking effort for WebAssembly. Uh, maybe someone is writing an article and they need to have some performance data to back up what they've done. Uh, maybe someone is developing uh, a runtime or a runtime feature um, and they've created some sort of benchmarking you know, driver and, and, and had some benchmarks available um, that you can download and try. But the bottom line is most of these efforts are one-off repository specific efforts that are not necessarily peer scrutinized and not innovated on. Um, you know, these are typically benchmarks done by engineers who are motivated, um, as I said, by, you know, uh, an article or by, you know, some specific feature they're working on or some runtime. But the point is, it's very specific. It isn't runtime agnostic. It's not platform agnostic. And it's not necessarily workload agnostic as well. It's for a targeted use case. Um, but in contrast, if you look at established programming targets, programming techniques, you'll see that they typically employ, uh, they have established benchmarks um, that they can employ um, for standardized performance reporting and comparison, right? Think, uh, you know, spec benchmarks or for, for Java or, uh, or, or C, for example. So what we currently have are scattered efforts. And what we want is something more. Um, we want something that is accessible and novice friendly. We want something that is simple to install, run, and has unambiguous, easy to interpret results. Uh, we want something that provides a baseline to gauge performance. Um, you know, that means when we run a single run of this benchmark, we know right then and there how well our platform performs with WebAssembly. We want something that is portable and produces comparable scores when run across multiple platforms. Uh, and that just simply means it's okay to compare um, uh, when run on platform X with ISA X compared to platform Y with ISA Y. And finally, um, we need something that is um, reliable uh, and repeatable. Um, and that's the case with any benchmark. Um, but specifically, we want something that works for a variety of workloads um, and use cases um, and something that will basically basically be relevant to a broad audience, right? Um, we want something that can establish itself. So the last slide basically gave us our motivation and our requirements for what we want to achieve out of WASM score. So, so that's where we start, but the question now is, well, what does the design look like? How do we achieve this? And for that question, we start with our benchmarking driver. Um, so we talked about these one-off benchmarks that exist, but one that isn't, you know, one of these kind of one-off efforts that is pretty solid is SiteGlass. So SiteGlass is a benchmarking suite and tool uh, under the Bytecode Alliance project repositories. It is uh, well thought out. Um, it originally uh, was used to help develop the Lucid runtime and eventually 
came under the purview for helping to develop WASM time. So it's going through some redesign and some of uh, those changes include things like having the potential for plug and play with different runtimes, uh, meaning even though currently it's targeting WASM time, there is the potential to add other runtimes. It has many knobs for controlling um, run stability, and it includes a variety of benchmarks um, that may cater to multiple use cases. So that may beg the question of why not just uh, add uh, to site glass directly and um, you know that was considered uh, but ultimately it was determined that the end requirements and use cases differ enough so what is the design and uh, some of the features that make wasm score what it is make it a little different uh, than the driver that it uh, employs so number one wasm score uses a container um, that means it's lightning fast to get started. It's cross-platform, and this makes it easy to include tools that can be used during data collection or uh, post-processing. Uh, number two, it uses scores. Uh, this isn't necessarily novel, um, but this is something that is uh, useful whenever you have to aggregate a number of scores and you need to summarize those results. Um, and lastly, uh, as we said, it leverages site class, but it's not a fork of site class. It uses site class directly as a submodule. So, you know, uh, when we were developing WASM score, we included uh, a native engine, which is used in WASM score, but we included that into site class. So we iterate on WASM score and we also iterate on site class to make WASM score better. Um, so, um, you know, and another point I wanted to make is that some aspects of site class, such as the workload repository um, and definitions of suites, aren't included in WASM score. They are kept separate. So um, th there's various things that are kept and various things that are that are separate. Um, so in a nutshell, the design is that we put, uh, you know, site class and other tools in a Docker container. We configure the container such that we can dump results to the host or have access to the host to do things such as perf analysis. Um, also in that container, we have a Python script that drives the whole process of running the WASM benchmark, but also and uniquely is we have um, you know, the com compilation of that same benchmark to native. Um, and in that way, we can produce performance comparisons, which we will demo in the next slide. Up until this point, we've spent a lot of time talking about motivation and aspects of the design. But here we will show a quick example of how to download and run. So to download, it's just as simple as a Docker pull command to retrieve the image. Uh, so we'll do that now. After it downloads, we are able to run directly. So you can see here uh, all of the layers being downloaded. So we've already done this ahead of time. Uh, and so you can see on uh, this tab, that we've already kind of run the container. I'll scroll up here to the top. So to run it, um, again, this is just a Docker run command. And here you can see the various benchmarks being run uh, for calculating the score. Uh, keep in mind that the native bench that you see here, so you see native time and WASM time, the native benchmarks are compiled in real time using the high level source of the benchmark. It's the same high-level source used to compile the pre-compiled WebAssembly file uh, for the benchmark, uh, which is already included in the downloaded image. So we, we don't compile the WASM in real time, just the native. Um, there's a limited number of categories and benchmarks being aggregated to create a score, but there are many uh, more benchmarks available to run. And you can see the scores for you know AI inferencing, uh, we have Mesh Optimizer, Ackerman, uh, Fibonacci, uh, where we categorize these benchmarks and report the times uh, and efficiency for each category. 
um, you know, these averages uh, that we're using here um, are being used to calculate the overall WASM efficiency uh, and execution score where higher is better. Uh, keep in mind the efficiency score is just the ratio of the WASM performance compared to the native performance, where individual benchmark performance is based on the inverse of time. So in a nutshell, an efficiency score of 0.63 here communicates uh, that the WASM executed at a 63% efficiency uh, compared to uh, the natively executed code. Also keep in mind, because we're using a container, we can stuff whatever tools we need inside this container. Uh, so on this tab, in this case, we can see that we have a, a different uh, WASM score container. Uh, this one is a, a debug version where what we're debugging here is performance. Um, so in this case, we've put here a VTune kind of performance analysis tool inside, and you can see on the help menu uh, how to use this. Uh, it's for use with a specific benchmark. Uh, so when we run, uh, the perf analysis is run on both the WebAssembly and the native. So now, instead of just comparing scores, we can also uh, get a quick uh, assessment of performance issues um, between the two and do a comparison uh, that way. So you can see here the uh, perf files are mapped to the host uh, with this ls command. Uh, the patch for this is currently in a private branch, but we do plan to uh, merge this uh, very soon. Well, because we have both the WASM performance and the native performance, we can quickly see um, in which categories WASM is performing well compared to native and in, in which they are not. Um, uh, and keep in mind, this ratio is something that uh, is comparable across ISIS. Uh, plotting some data, as you see here, um, we can see some gaps. Um, we can also see some outliers in the other way, which uh, can prompt some analysis. But uh, the outliers here that I've um, highlighted, Ackerman and AD25519, um, you know, Ackerman, for example, using the perf files that we could generate, uh, we can see that a significant amount of time was spent in lowering, while with ED25519, the um, gap was due to function calls to support 64-bit multiplication, uh, which currently uh, is not being done natively. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, there hasn't been a ton of work done the past year, uh, but this is, uh, you know, something that is slowly being iterated on. Um, so we want to be able to add additional scores, uh, WASI or SIMD, for example. And when we talk about scores, we're talking about some sort of comparison. I think that's the basis of, of WASM score, having that baseline comparison. So with SIMD, it would maybe be scalar. With WASI, it would maybe be WASM or maybe it would be native. Um, additional runtime support. If we add another runtime, I think there's, um, you know, uh, to do right now in site class to add node. Um, you can imagine a, a suite of, of runtimes, and we can even have something like an ensemble uh, where we are aggregating the scores of all the runtimes to get a generic baseline performance for a WebAssembly. Um, you know, more benchmarks. That's, you know, always uh, something that. Uh, every benchmark effort is looking for. Um, and these are always changing as use cases for WebAssembly emerge. Uh, better feature support, the profiling support is uh, soon to be merged, but we want to do a better job of aggregating results and there's other features that we want to add. Um, and of course, increased participation. Um, you know, you need more than a couple of engineers in order to have a good survey of what makes a good benchmark, good ideas. Um, so this is something that we're always uh, looking to improve on. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we just want to leave with the uh, address uh, for WASM score um, and note kind of the, the tenants uh, that went into creating uh, the benchmark. So the goal here was ease of use. We use Docker for simple deployment. Um, we 
you know, aggregate data in a way that's easy to digest, um, provide tools such as, you know, uh, for perf analysis. Um, this doesn't expect the user to be an expert, um, but it does give it enough tools to, uh, to do analysis. Um, the goal is to provide the user with a baseline out of the box. Um, and we do that by having native, um, and this is portable across platforms because we actually compile in real time so that we can get that native score for that particular platform. And, um, you know, we need something that uh, is solid. The results are repeatable, relevant. And for that, we leverage site class um, that is tried and true. Uh, we don't use a fork. We leverage it directly in any support that we need um, related to site class. We add to that project first uh, before adding it um, instead of adding it to WASM score. Um, and that concludes the talk. Uh, thank you very much.